This is section 8.5, which is about critical paths and the critical path algorithm. We're going to spend two days in this section. So recall our car wreck example from the first day of class. So we wrecked our car. There were four repairs and two mechanics. We had exterior body work that's going to take four hours. Engine repair is going to take five hours. Painting, seven hours. Transmission repair, three hours. And we know that the exterior body work must be completed before painting and exterior work can begin. Or in other words, A has to be totally done before C is finished. Now, if I was going to draw a project digraph, I know that I would start with a start. And I would ask myself, what can I start? Well, I know that I could do task A because there's nothing that has to be completed before A. And I could do task B because there's nothing that needs to be completed before B. But I can't do C yet. I can't do C because A has to be done before C. So C would need to go out here after task A. I could also start task D right away as well. And that was three hours. Now, once I get to the end of these strains, I don't have anything else to arrow over to. Out degree, we're, we're going to show that's the end of this strain of thought. All right, so here's my project digraph. It's beautiful. And we want to determine a way to schedule this. Now, we kind of played around with this schedule at the uh, first day when we were talking about scheduling. And the, I, we determined we couldn't do anything in less than 11 hours. The reason why was because of this path up here. I know that A has to be done before C. A is going to take us 4 hours, and C is going to take us 11 hours. So no matter what we do, this project is going to take us 11 hours, no matter how many people we work on it. The longest path from start to end in your problem is called the critical path. Or in this case, our critical path is this thing right here. The path from start to, in, to A to C to end. That's going to tell us in our problem what the minimum finish time for this. Or basically, every project has some point where you cannot go any lower than a certain finish time. It doesn't matter if I, matter if I have 100 people willing to work on this project. I will not be able to get it done in 11 hour, any less than 11 hours. Okay, so the critical path for a vertex is this word that we use to describe how long it's going to take you to get done with the project from that point. So for a given vertex x of a project digraph, the critical path for x is the path from x to the end with the longest processing time. When we add the processing times of all the tasks along the critical path we get for the vertex x, we get the critical time for x. That's kind of mumbo jumbo right there. Here. So let's, let me give you a little summary here. Um, remember your processing time is written in parentheses. This tells you it takes six hours to get this done. We're going to use a bracket around a number. This says it's a critical time. So this is different. This says it tells me eight hours to actually get to the end once you start working on this thing. Okay, so if I have my little picture from the past, I like to um, think, well, how much time is in front of this? So here's task A, and I want to know once I start A, how much work is in front of me? Well, I've got A, which is six, and then I would have to do D, which is two. So in front of A, once you start A, you've got eight hours worth of work. And we're going to put that in a bracket there. Okay, and once you start D, well, in front of D, there's the two hours of work to D. So once you start D, there's only two hours ahead of you. What about B? Well, B has to go through D, so there's five hours to do B and two hours to do D, so that would make seven hours. Once you start task B, you've got seven hours of work in front of you. Um, C, there's seven hours for C and the five hours of E in front of it, so there are 12 hours there. Once we start C, it'll take us 12 hours. And here's E, there's nothing in front of E, so once you start E, you're home free. It's five hours. These are called critical times. So on your graph, you always want to make sure you do them in either a different color or you put them in these brackets so that you don't get them confused with your processing time. Now what about start? What's the longest path from start to end? Or what, how much time is it definitely going to take us? Well, the route through A takes eight hours, the route through B takes seven, and the route through C takes 12. So no matter how many processors we use, we still have 12 hours worth of work or less, no matter what. The longest path from start to end is called that critical path. So start also has a critical time of 12. Here's my longest path. Okay, So the critical path goes start. Sorry, my pen is not working. Okay, the critical time is start and C and E and end. That's my critical time or my critical path there. 
it's the longest path from start to end. No matter what I do, no matter how many processors I use, it's going to take me 12 hours to do this task. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to schedule these other things in the meantime. Set one processor working on the critical path and then use the rest of these times um, to fill them in. If you notice though, what's left over is um, quite a bit of work. Six hours for A and two hours for D, that's eight hours total, plus another five hours working on B, that's 13 hours. So if I only use two processors, it's probably going to take me about 13 hours to get this thing done, not 12. If I can use as many processors as I want, I can get it done in 12. All right. Now, the more precedence relationships you have, the more difficult it is to figure out what the critical time is. So we're going to use something called the backflow algorithm. Here's the idea. Instead of starting at the beginning, we're going to start at the end, and we're going to look backwards. We're going to determine the critical time for a vertex, how long it takes to get from that vertex to the end. And since it's at the end, there shouldn't be that much stuff in front of it. Next, we're going to look back at another vertex in front of it. And the critical time for the vertex is the processing time for that vertex plus the largest critical time of any vertex coming from that. Or in other words, if I've got a number, sorry, a task with a processing time of P and there are three different paths I could go from there on out, I'm going to compare the actual critical times and I'm always going to choose the one that is largest. I'm going to take my processing time and add it to that critical time. Instead of adding up all of those tasks, I just use the critical time itself. All right, so let's do one of these. Here's this big example, okay, big graph. And I'm going to start at the end. All right, then I always figure if I'm working from left to right, I might as well work from bottom to top. So I'm going to start with J. What is the critical time for J? Well, once I start J, it takes seven hours. Okay. And again, so we're taking the processing time for a task plus the largest critical time that's in front of it. Okay, so we want the biggest critical time in front of it if that's the case. All right, in front of H is only task um, J, so it has 7, so I'm going to do 4 plus the 7 that's in the bracket. H has a critical time of 11. Then I have D, which is 14. Now, if you notice D, there are two arrows coming out of that. So I would need to compare the two brackets in front of it. Since I don't have this one yet, I'm going to go back to the end and start again. All right. K is 18. It goes directly to the end, so the critical time for K is 18. Here's G. G has to go through K, so I'm going to take the two hours for G and add it to the critical time in front of it, which is 18. 2 plus 18 is 20. All right, here we go, back to D now. Now when I look at D, D has 14 hours. I'm going to add that 14 hours to either this 20 or this 11. Okay, I'm either going to do 14 plus 20 or 14 plus 11. The way I make my choice is that if there are multiple decisions to be made, I always choose the bracket that has the biggest number in it. Okay, so that means I would choose this 20 hours over the 11. So 20 plus 14 is 34. <coughs> Excuse me. Now C has 11, and I notice it arrows over to these two vertices. So I'm going to do the 11 plus the 20, or the 11 plus the 11, and I would decide by choosing the one that's biggest. So since we have a bracket of 20 and 11, I'm going to go with the 20. Notice I'm not looking at the processing time. I'm not interested in the 2 and the 4 right now. I'm looking at the critical time in the bracket. So it's always the processing time, which is in parentheses, of the one you're looking at plus the biggest one that's in front of it. All right, so 11 plus 20 is 31. All right, I is 13. All right, in front of 13 is 18. That's the only thing in front of it. 13 and 18 is 31. Okay, F has to go through I, so 3 plus the 31 in front of it is 34. B, there's a choice, so I need this E first, so I'm going to go back again. E has to go through I, so 5 plus the 31 is 36. It's always the processing time plus the bracket in front of it, and if you have a choice, you pick the biggest one. For B, I have a choice between the 36 and the 34. So if I look at this, I would want to pick the biggest one, I mean the 3 plus 36 or 3 plus 34. I would choose that path right there. 3 plus 36 is 39. And finally I have A. A goes through E, so 2 plus 36 is 38. 
So here's the critical time from each vertex. A is 38, B is 39, C is 31, etc. All these red numbers in brackets, those are my critical times. Find the critical path for the entire project. Well, let's look at the start. Start works the same way. It has a processing time of zero. It would pick the biggest of the four numbers in front of it. I've got 38, 39, 31, and 34. So I would pick 39, that's the biggest number, and 0 plus 39 gives me 39. All right, so what is the critical path? Well, the critical path says what's the, um, the biggest number in front of it. So from the start, I would have gone to B because that's the biggest critical time. From B, I would have, cho I would have chosen E, which is 36 because that's the biggest critical time. Then there's only one remaining path from start to end. This thing right here is my critical path in the problem. It is very important that we get these tasks started as soon as possible. Ideally, what we'd like to happen is to set one processor working on this while the rest of the processors got everything else done. The other thing about this critical path, which is this guy right here, um, the other thing about the critical path that's important is that it has a time of 39. That means no matter how many processors we use, we won't be able to get this done in any less than 39 hours. Now maybe we can get it done in you know 40 or 41 or 42 and that would be a good answer. But if I had as many processors as I want, I would have 39. All right, let's go down to the Martian housing unit problem. So we had this, okay? And I'm going to start from the end again. Okay, let me get my pen the right color. How about red? Okay, now EU goes straight to the end, that's 2. PU goes through EU, 3 plus 2 is 5. ID is 5. Now there's nothing in front of it except for this one, so 5 plus the 5 in the bracket. So remember, it's always the processing time of the one you're looking at plus the biggest critical time in front of it if there's a choice or just the critical time. So 5 plus 5 is 10. And AD um, I would take the 8 plus the critical time. That would be 18. Now start has four choices, so I need to go to the end again. PD is 3. There's only 3 in front of it. HU has a choice of three things. I need to go back to the end again. FW is 6. And IC, 1 plus 6 is 7. Okay. All right, so here's HU. HU has three options. Okay, I want to take its uh, processing time, which is 4, and I want to add it to either the 7, the 3, or the 2. And I always pick by the biggest one that I have. So 4 plus 7 is 11. If we had to have choices here, we would choose the IC because it's the biggest value. Okay, IP is 4, and it has two choices. Now again, you're always going to pick the biggest of the two choices. So 4 plus the 11 versus 4 plus 5. And we're going to add to the 11, so I would choose this HU route. 4 plus 11 is 15. Here's IW. IW is 7, so I'm either going to do 7 plus 15 or 7 plus 10. Again, you take the processing time plus the biggest one in front of it. Um, 15 is bigger than 10. Notice that it's processing time of 4 and processing time of 5, but I'm talking about critical time. So 7 plus 15 okay, is 22. All right, so we keep plodding through. AW has to go through IW, so 6 plus 22 is 28. PL has to go through IC, 4 plus that 7 is 11. IF has two choices, IW, which is 22, or PL, which is 11. It's definitely going to go through IW. 5 plus 22 is 27. AF goes through that IF, which is 27. 5 plus 27 is 32. And then 7 plus 27 is 34. From the start, 32, 28, 18. Okay, and I would go with 34. Okay, now as far as my critical path goes, Okay, the critical path is the longest path from start to end by critical time. So from start, you would go to the 34, followed by the 27, then we picked the 22, then we picked the 15 over the 10, I picked the 11 over the 5, I picked the 7 over the 3 and 2, no choice, no choice, there's my critical path. Okay, this is the most important task in the problem. So I would say AP, IF, IW, IP, HU, 
which is won't write h u i c f w pin that won't write and that gives me a time of 34. I know that this task can't be done in any longer than 34 hours sorry any shorter than 34 hours that's the very best time if I had as many processors as I possibly could use it's going to take me at least 34 hours to get this project done it might take me more depending on whether or not I can physically fit all of that other stuff done in the time where I'm working on the critical path now tonight for your homework you're going to get some problems that look like regular scheduling problems so they may look something like this guy right here and it'll have the critical times and then there'll be a schedule underneath it. What I want you to do tonight, the only thing you have to do on the worksheet that you're going to get for tonight is to do this top part for every problem. You're going to find the critical time from each vertex and write those down. You're not going to do any scheduling for today. Okay, tomorrow um, when I see you we will go over the rest of this about how to make the priority list based on the critical time and we will get our scheduling stuff done after we've checked and made sure that everybody